Okay, in this video we're going to be discussing input and output streams. Uh, basically, they are the most standard ways to communicate to a running program. Um, there are three primary streams that we're going to be concerned with. Uh, the first is the input stream, uh, and then that's called standard input. And then we have a, an output stream. We have two output streams. One of them is called standard output, and then the other output stream is called standard error. Okay, so if you have an error in your program and you want to print out the error messages, that should be communicated on the standard error output. Any other information should be output on the standard, uh, standard out channel. Okay, so just think of these as three separate channels of communication. One is for input, and then we have two different types of output. All right, so <clears throat> let's get started with uh, the command line. Um, so I can, I can run a particular program ls-l, right, and that should list out the items uh, on my desktop. Right? I don't have any items in here. Um, I can make a file go um, file.txt. Uh, I'm going to say hello in here. All right, now ls-l, we have at least one entry, all right, and what we can do is any command I, uh, I execute, the output is by default uh, output to my terminal, right? But I can change that. I can put, make the output go to another file, right? ls-l, and I can redirect that output to ls.txt. So this, I'm calling this ls because it's the output of my ls command, but I could name this file anything. So now when I press enter, it's going to execute ls-l. And that output, instead of going to my terminal, is going to go into this file. Okay, so we see there was no output. That's because it goes in the file. I can look in the file using the cat command. And sure enough, there is the output that we were looking for. All right. Uh, <clears throat> now, interesting thing to note here is ls.txt actually did show up in the result of ls. So that's interesting that the file was created before the command was executed. All right. Anyway, uh, this is standard output, ls-l. All right. How can we tell what standard output is? Or uh, Because by default, standard output and standard error both go to the terminal. For example, if I have the copy command and uh, I only give it one argument and I just type in some gibberish here, that's an error. Right, we see there's an error code, and we see it is printing something, and uh, perhaps that's on standard out, or perhaps it's on standard error. We don't really know. So one way we can find out is um, we're using Z shell here. Uh, so it depends on your shell a little bit, but if you're using Z shell, you can uh, redirect the standard out and standard error like this. Okay, so we can run the copy command again, and I can say, um, as we mentioned, there are there are three primary uh, streams to communicate with, uh, file streams that you, to communicate with with your process. Uh, the, the file descriptor 0 represents the input stream or standard in. File descriptor 1 represents standard out and file descriptor 2 represents standard error. So if we're talking about error, I'm going to use file descriptor 2 and the greater than symbol. So this is kind of like um, when we redirect the output like that that's actually a shortcut for file descriptor one or standard output, right? And we want that to go to a file. So here, I want to I want the error to go to a file. So we'll call this cp.err. Okay, so this should be any error messages we get from running this cp command, right? And if I press enter, we see that we get no output. Normally, we would have gotten output here. So that means all of this output was uh, on the error error stream. Okay, so we can verify that. We can look inside cp.error, and sure enough, that's the error information. Okay, what if you have a command that has both um, standard output and uh, standard error output? Right. Well, we want to differentiate between those two items. Okay, so first, let's make a program that does that. A really simple program in Python. Um, I'm going to make a new file and call this um, standard out standard error dot qy. 
Okay, and all we're going to do here is uh, print out something in standard output and then print out something in standard error. And, and to print out something in standard error, you need to import a library, the sys library. And that allows you uh, to communicate uh, on the standard error uh, channel. Okay, so for standard output, we're used to just the print function, right? And we can just type uh, standard output. And then we will print standard error. Okay. Now the difference here with standard error is we needed to tell the, the print function to uh, print that to the appropriate uh, file stream. All right. So we say file equals, and then we use our sys library sys dot standard error okay you may not have seen this type of argument in python before this is what's called a keyword argument meaning it's a named argument instead of just passing in an argument data separated by commas this is uh, a specific argument that actually has a name what what's the name of the argument this is the file argument and what are we setting it equal to sys dot standard error okay so these are called keyword arguments or quargs sometimes all right so this is a very simple program, three lines of code. This prints out to standard output, because that's what print does by default. And then print here, uh, this standard error message is going to print to the, uh, the file stream standard error for this process. Okay, So we save that, and we can go to our terminal, and we can run Python 3, standard out, standard error. Okay, So both of these items print out by default. Uh, to the terminal because standard error and standard out by default both go to the terminal. So we need to use our special shell syntax to uh, see to, to separate these two streams. Okay, so I'm going to make number two file descriptor, which is our standard error. I'm going to make that output to uh, error.txt, and then our number one file descriptor, which is our standard output, I'm going to make that out.txt. Okay, so both of the output streams should now be redirected to a file. So I should get no output to the terminal. Okay, that's good. And there should be new files. We should have error.txt and then out.txt. So let's look. Error.txt, that is the standard error. So that looks good. And then out.txt, that's our standard output. So we have successfully split up the two. Uh, different streams of information and so we can successfully communicate on the error stream as well as on the output stream and this is important because uh, the output of a particular command may be used in other commands and you don't want to mix in error data with uh, normal output data right or you might want to check to see if there was an error before you try to parse the output of another command so being able to separate these are, is important All right, so that's uh, standard output and standard error. The third item is standard input. Okay, so with standard input, um, we can use a command like grep to demonstrate what that does. When I type grep, I pass in as an argument a, a pattern that I want to match. So I want to match the pattern foo. And what the grep program does is whenever uh, anything is communicated on standard input uh, that matches that pattern, grep prints it out again and it, it colorizes it in this case. Okay, so uh, standard input, the program is just now waiting for me to type something in, right? I have to input some data, right? And we see the cursor here is just blinking. So I can input anything I want in character data and that line does not match our pattern, right? But I can say uh, foods and that line does match our pattern. So this is the line that I wrote, and then grep responded by colorizing the pattern match and then printing out foods, right? So it, it uh, reiterates any line that contains that pattern, all right? And then I can hit Control D to signal the end of file to grep, and so the program will stop. So this is more useful for if I type ls-l, <clears throat> and I want to find out, you know, any .python files that I have in, in this directory, right? I might have, you know, 
hundreds of files in here. So I can say ls-l, and I want to redirect uh, this output here. The pipe lets you redirect that to standard input of the next command. So this is going to be grep, and I'm going to be searching for .py. Okay. And sure enough, it scans all of the would-be output of ls-l, and if any one of those lines matches .py, then it goes ahead and prints that out. So the difference between this example and the example up here is I was manually typing in the standard input here. That's why we see all the, the uh, non-matches, right? But the standard input in this example comes from this command, and I redirected that using pipe to standard input of the following command. Okay, so that's what the pipe does. It converts standard output into standard input for the next command. All right, and in Python, we can uh, have standard, standard input as well. There we go, standard in. And <clears throat> the Python makes it a little bit uh, easier to abstract some of the difficulty away. So we can just say input. And so we're going to get some string variable here. It's going to call it s. And then what I'll do is I'll just print it out twice. All right, so that's all this program is going to do. And you can see I can run Python 3, standard in, .py. Now it's waiting for me to type something, just like when we executed, executed the grep command. And I can say foo. And then it prints it out twice, and the program stops. Alternatively, I could also redirect uh, output from a, another command. I could say echo foo. And I can pipe that into .py. So now uh, foo is going to be the standard input, just like it was up here to program, but I'm not actually going to have to type it in. Okay, so the same result happens. So those are the three standard uh, uh, streams of communication. You can think of them as channels of communication to a running running process. We have standard input, standard output and standard error.